inside of us. There's a nature that we carry that's waiting to express itself through us. And it's going to come as one of the objective of manifestation of that nature is going to come through order. And it's not just any type of order. If it's your order and you haven't manifested the fruit, then you know that was chaotic. Mm -hmm. like we started off, I said chaos and order. You can have an orderly disorder and never have a chance to understand what God's <laughs> order is all about. And most of us, we've read the Bible, we know what he wants. But he wants this thing to be worked out in our life. Amen. And uh, one of the retributional qualities, that means retribution, it just means something that God wanted to uh, execute in the earth. One of the qualities of our own personal freedom is going to bring a, a, an alignment of sorts to creation. Yes. Creation is groaning mm -hmm. and travailing. I know you're groaning and travailing. Mm -hmm. You're looking for your release. But the earth is groaning and travailing. And you can see it, you know, God has allowed us to have a, a pigeon view of it, not only through scriptures, but we can see the pains and the travail through the media. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. media itself is not the solution, but it's a portal where we can just take a peek into, not to be relegated by the information, the pronostication and all that, but it can be a litmus test, an awakening of sorts for us, so that the burden that we carry has an object. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So there's a destiny to be worked out on the inside of us, so that creation can participate in the glorious liberty that is to come to the body of Christ. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen? And it's not necessarily just going to be the church that's going to bring this liberty. Amen. We don't, you know, we can't have church and church more abundantly. He didn't come that we can have church. He came that we can have life. Amen. And that more abundant, his quality of life. And uh, so it's very important for us to understand everything that I've said up to this point leads us to this pinnacle. You know, all the order, all the alignment, all the adjusting, all of the snapshots that we took through the Old Testament. All of the backdrop that Paul laid out, right? All the dissecting of the, the term itself order. All of those things are great. And you need, you need to have definitive understanding as it relates to how things are to be laid out. But it needs to, not only does it need to be done in theory or, or like I always told you guys, orthodox. Mm -hmm. The church is perfected orthodox. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, we, we, that's what we, we feed from it, we lean on it, but but there's another level of ortho that's still lacking, and that's orthoproxy. That's the demonstration. Amen? Amen. One thing I, I was musing over that I was going to put in the group, but I'm putting a message on it out of Mark 16 and 20. It said that the Lord was working with the word that was being preached. Remember, anybody remember Mark 16 and 20? <laughs> go to Mark 16. We'll go to Joel and the same. <laughs> Mark 16, where Jesus had left and gave assignment to his church, his fivefold, I mean, not his fivefold, but his apostles. <clears throat> remember that story when Jesus said, in my name, you're going to cast out devils. Anybody remember that? Mm -hmm. Cast out devils. If you Pentecostal charismatic, you should know that. <laughs> it should be second nature to us to know that when in Mark 16 is, is uh, when he was getting ready to assign a certain amount of grace upon the church. So it wasn't just applicable for those that was present. It's also applicable for us today. Right? Mm -hmm. So he says, uh, after he started announcing to them all of the different characteristics of this new nature being demonstrated in, among society as a vehicle to bring true evangelism, this is what he said. And then it talks about how after he gave them these instructions, the protocol of the kingdom, he said, and they went forth. So whatever he said in verse 17, 18, and 19 was enough for them to move forward with it. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they didn't need a conference. They just had him give them instructions, give them a mandate, and they went forth. Right? And they preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. That's what we want to be. That's orthoproxy. 
We want to be able to go forth with signs following. Man. Check this out. Something stood out, leaped in my heart. So they had the right message. Therefore, by having the right message, you have the right demonstration. Right? Mm -hmm. If the message is right, there's an innate ability for what we preach to manifest or be demonstrated or to be lived out. And this is what I've been doing for seven. I have seven shots to, to allow the Lord to confirm with science following. So I'm looking for the manifestation of this teaching. So this is not just something you can include in your life here. I want you to uh, cleave your heart to it, join your heart to this teaching. And though I'll be done talking about it, it's imperative for you to seek it out. It has to become a part of who you are because it is a culture. If we're going to be kingdom, you cannot be kingdom without order. Amen. You can't be kingdom without structure, without government, without alignment, without adjustment, without repentance, without washing regeneration. All of these terms bring gives us a distinct quality, even from mainstream Christianity. Mm -hmm. Okay? Y'all all right? Joel 2. <laughs> Joel 2. Joel. Right message, right demonstration. What would teach that right there? That's, that's powerful. I want, that's what I, Jesus personified, personified right message and right demonstration. Yeah. Yeah. We need, we need to be demonstrated. We need signs. We need, because signs is a witness of the authenticity of your message. We've liquidated signs and made it about casting out devils, healing the sick. But your transformation is the ultimate sign. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. Joel 2. Transform, right? Never heard of that word before. <laughs> I know. So we're going to get Joel. Joel, we started off last week. We, we went to Joel 1. We found out how the land was at waste. And there was a desolate wilderness. It was a, things that was chaotic. Things was out of order. Mm -hmm. It was a system failure. It was a high level dysfunction. Am I right? But then in the midstream before God goes to the third chapter and talks about the restorative qualities of the kingdom of God, he says, I'm going to put this entity in the earth. There's people who have so been submitted to the things of God privately. That have allowed their hearts to be recalibrated and be adjusted. And allowed the word to have place. So we're going to look at the manifestation of this order. Joel 2 is the manifestation of this order. Somebody had told me that they were seeking God about some things in their life, and they said, God gave them Joel. What a blessing. What, I mean, just imagine if we can follow through with it. Because I have so many people tell me they're giving me address after address, but the door never opened. God wants us to be able to, when God give you a dream, God give you a vision, that's some grace right there. You should just hold on to it. You know what I'm saying? You should be like Jacob. I'm not going to let you go till you bless me. That's what you do with a message. When God gives you a revelation, a teaching, an instruction, anything supernatural that he bypasses your senses, mm -hmm. that's because it's important. It's life changing. Don't make light of it, right? Okay, Joel 1. He says, blow you the trumpet in Zion. So after the assignment was wasted, this nation would find itself in, in, a, in a decline, in apostasy. He said, blow the trumpet in Zion. And Zion, I told you, you have three. So let me just go through it for a minute. Blow your trumpet in Zion, sound alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord coming. For it's near at hand. Next verse. A day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds, a thick darkness as the morning spread upon the mountains. <laughs> Talk about swallow them in victory. Spread upon the mountains. All the authority. What he want to do in Zion is going to spread upon the mountains. And what's the fruit of that spreading upon the mountains? A oh, great people. And strong. There has not been ever the light. So you can't get it uh, through seminary. Right. You, can't, you might not even get it in study. Because it's not going to come through the wisdom of man. Amen. It's going to come through spirit. 
has not been ever the like. Neither should be any more after it. One prototype, one species. Am I right? Yeah. Uh, even to the even to the years of many generations. In other words, you couldn't discover what the sum total what God wants to do among this type of people, great and strong people. This particular people, He set aside. He said He set aside the godly for Himself. Yes. You will not be able to trace the lineage right. of what God wants to do. Right. See, that's what ecclesia is. You ever heard the word yeah. ecclesia? Anybody ever heard called out? It's generic because we everybody know what it means, and it's been trumped and and it's defective. But if you really, really knew what it mean means, that's happens all the time. He's always calling out a people mm -hmm. from out of a people. Even a people out of his own people. Mm -hmm. Even a people, you get what I'm saying? So even though it brought people here, it's, it's going to be without this particular generation. So it won't be by might. It won't be by power. But it's going to be by spirit. And he says like this in John uh, 1 and 12 and 13 it says uh, talks about that to as many that receive him you know the power you know became sons of God but then the 13th verse it says not of what not of will of man not of flesh or not of blood huh? so there's nothing biologically nothing biologically um, descriptive of what God wants to create in the earth that's why it's a new creation that's why it's a catesis man. Mm -hmm. You ever heard those terms? Mm -hmm. So I'm connecting dots all through the 66 books. So this entity, this organization, this army that many have thought is locust is not a natural army. It's a supernatural army. Amen? Like Apostle Tim, bless his soul, used to tell me it's, 